The median price for a used car listed on Carfax has jumped 31 percent in two years to $28,000. Wow, but what happens if that pricey car quits or it needs major repairs right after you buy it? Kyra 7's Jesse Jones joins us with how a change in law could provide real protections for consumers. Monique, if you're buying a used car from a dealer in Washington, the law says the consumer has an implied warranty. It's not much, let me be honest with you, it's super confusing. However, the key to it all is knowing how to use that law to your advantage. Justin Boss bought a 2012 Ford Taurus on a Friday. The next Wednesday, he took the car to a mechanic. Well, the entire underside was covered in rust. They ended up having to replace uh, control arms. So that was $1,500 because the bolts on the car, on the subframe, were so rusted they were seized up. So they had to actually saw the bolts off because they weren't serviceable. The car he just spent $13,000 on now needs $4,000 in repairs. What's going through my mind is, oh crap, this is catastrophic. When Justin complained to the dealership, he says a salesperson reminded him of this document. It's the implied warranty negotiation statement. Justin had signed it and gave up his warranty rights when he purchased the car. And now he's responsible for all costs of repairs. In essence, pulled out the, you sign the as is and uh, the as is warranty. There is no warranty. See, most used cars sold out of dealerships in Washington have an implied warranty, which means the car will be fit for ordinary driving purposes, be reasonably safe without major defects, and will be of the average quality of similar cars available for sale in the same price range. No recourse. And according to Attorney General Bob Ferguson, that warranty must be negotiated and signed before a deal is done. So you might say, okay, you know what, we'll knock off another grand off the price, but you're taking this as is, Bob. And that means when you drive off, it breaks down, that's on you, because you're giving up the warranty that's here. Well, now that's a negotiation. So where was the negotiation in Justin's case? Uh, this is your implied warranty. Was there any negotiation? No. Nope, it was part of the thick stack of papers that they always hand you when you're closing a car sale. Sign here, sign here, sign here. Unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, um, ambiguity in this law, which I, in my opinion needs to be cleared up. Mo Ali Abadi is the owner of South Tacoma Auto. He had nothing to do with the sale of Justin's car, but he's the best guy I know who understands implied warranties from the dealer's perspective. First, what does as is mean? In other words, if this car falls in two pieces outside of my driveway, is the vehicle sold as is? It's your car, no longer mine. But Mo believes the implied warranty law does need some work. Do you think that needs to be sharpened up? 100%. What would you suggest? I would suggest that you know uh, the attorney general will take a look at this law and, and make it more precise. The Attorney General's Office says from January 2021 to April of this year, consumers have filed more than 400 complaints mentioning implied warranties. And that accounts for 31% of all automotive complaints to the office. This is one of the top complaints we hear about from consumers. You can start seeing some rust elements. The question is, does Washington need to go to a used car lemon law? Currently, six states have them. You have a warranty under a used car, period, full stop. You're not negotiating that away. It just exists. And so that takes out some ambiguity that exists right now. In most cases, the used car lemon laws provide a warranty link dependent on the vehicle's age. I'm interested in looking at, do we need a change in state law? I think you would eliminate an entire buyer segment. Brian Danzel is the executive director of the Washington State Independent Auto Dealers Association. He says a used car lemon law would be an unfunded mandate that would hurt dealers and consumers. So a car that might be, you know, $3,500, $4,000, all of a sudden it might be like, you know, $5,000, $5,200. In the meantime, here's your best bet. Make sure you have any used car inspected before purchase. It will give you the leverage you need when negotiating the implied warranty. Be informed, get educated, research. You know, don't just buy a car because it's cheap or is next to you available. Research the, the, the car dealer, research the car, check the background.
Again, the bottom line is to have your car inspected before you buy it. Don't do it later. Okay, now we reached out to the dealer in Justin's case, and they provided a full refund for all the work that was done to his car. But you have to have these cars looked at. Dealer after dealer I spoke to says, you know, I'm more than willing to fix something if something goes wrong. Right. The problem is once you sign that paperwork, the deed has been done. Yeah. And there you go. Well, I'm glad you could get this fixed for this guy. But so you have the AG wondering, do we need to change state law? He's got to be looking at the other states. So what does it look like elsewhere? Okay. In other states, let's take a look at New York. In New York, vehicles with 36,000 miles or less, the warranty is 90 days or 4,000 miles. For vehicles between 80 and 100,000, it's 30 days or 1,000 miles. And in Arizona, it's really simple. 15 days, 500 miles. So here's the deal. People just need to know, and I think both sides need to know where this implied warranty stands. And if it happens to be a used car lemon law, where even if it's just minimal coverage, you just don't want people driving down the street, right? Wheels fall off the car and it's like, too bad, too sad. Right. And I think it would be good for both sides. The attorney general's looking at it. I expect to hear back from him soon to try to figure this out. This isn't the end of it. <laughs> Not by a long <laughs> shot. No, 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 no. No, and I can't wait for all my emails when I get back to my office. Great. I've got a lemon you can look at too, Jesse. <laughs> Thank you. you. Now, if you've got a problem for Jesse that you'd like him to investigate, give him a call. The number's on your screen, 1-844-77-JESSE. You can also submit a story idea at jessejones.com. Well, no